In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about working with IP addresses inside of Bubble. I'm not only gonna explain how we can extract someone's IP address from their browser, but how you can reformat that information into something useful, as well as of course, store that information in your own database. Then finally, I'm gonna give you a real world demo of how you can actually use this information within an app. And in my example today, I'm gonna to show you how we can exclude certain features of an app to users within a certain region. Look, there's so much that I want to cover throughout this build. So let's just grab our bubble editor and we can dive right into it. Within our tutorial today, there's quite a few things that I wanted to cover and walk you through. And so what I've done is I've just created a quick little checklist here in Notion, just so that way we can keep track of where we are throughout the build. Just as a side note, this is something that I do when it comes to any project inside of Bubble. I love to create a separate Notion checklist so that way I can check items off as I finish building them inside of Bubble. But that's enough from this. What I'd love to do is jump straight into Bubble and show you how you can start extracting a user's IP address. And so I've created a brand new editor here. And at this point in time, I have a blank page within my application. The only thing I've done is I've just updated the background color of this page to be a light shade of gray. So that way I could see where it sits in my overall bubble canvas. Now, when it comes to the process of extracting someone's IP address, today we're gonna to be using two free plugins to help build this feature. So if I head over to my plugins tab here, I've already installed the plugins, but what you'll need to do is open up your plugin library and just search for, first of all, the IPFI plugin which is a free plugin built by Bubble. And then there's another plugin called IPGO, but I won't touch base on that just right now. So what I'd recommend doing at this point in time is just installing the IPFI plugin first. And as I mentioned, this is a free plugin to install. We can then jump over to our design tab. And let's say if we ever wanted to display the user's IP address on a page, we could simply just add a text element onto our page here. We could choose to insert dynamic data, and in order to pull the user's IP address, we'd need to use this option known as get data from an external API. So the IPFI plugin itself is an API. Thankfully, it's built into a plugin though, so we don't need to write any manual code or API calls. So from the drop down menu, you then see the option to get the user's IP address. And this is the option linked to the IPFI plugin. And it truly is as simple as that. So if I was to now run a preview of my application here, what you'll see is in the top left-hand corner of my page, my IP address has been displayed. And you might find that the first time you preview your application, it might just take a little bit of time to load this information. But as you can see, the process of actually displaying someone's IP address couldn't be simpler. Now that's of course how we can show someone's IP address. But what happens if we wanna actually store that data in our database? That's a great question. And today I'm gonna to show you how to not only store the IP address in your database, but later on how we can enrich that IP address so that way we can get the country code from someone's address. So I'm just gonna jump back into Bubble here. Now for the sake of our tutorial today, I wanna show you a real world example of when you might need to save someone's IP address. And when it came to the process of actually creating this tutorial, I thought to myself, what's a product out there that's quite reliant on IP addresses? Then I'd realized to myself that a lot of streaming services rely on IP addresses because they tend to restrict content to certain regions. And so what I've done today is I created a sample app of my own, which is its own streaming service. So I'm just gonna jump over to my index page here. And this is where I'm super excited to announce the official launch of Lockflix. Lockflix is the new hottest streaming service that shows you all of your favorite Lachlan Kirkwood streaming content. So if I was to take a quick preview of this page, Page here. And if we were to scroll on down, you'll see we've got all our favorite streaming shows like Lachlan Things, Lachlan Game, Lachlan in Paris, Lachlan River, you name it, this service has it. And now of course, behind the scenes, I've been cutting deals with production agencies to only make this content accessible in certain regions. So although all these streams have worldwide demand, I've decided that I just wanna be exclusive and share this content for particular countries. And so what I'd like to do is create an experience that saves a user's IP address every single time they open up the homepage of my application. 
So if I jump into Bubble, what I'm gonna do is jump over into the workflow tab of this page, and I'm gonna create a brand new workflow from scratch. And I'd like this workflow to run every single time the page is loaded. Now within this workflow, I'd like to save an IP address under a particular user's account. But before I do that, what I'd love to also do is show you how I've set up my database, which is going to allow me to actually store someone's IP address in it. So I'm just gonna quickly divert to my data tab here. And under my user data type, you'll see I have a couple of different data fields. So to start with, I'm storing stuff like the user's name and their profile photo. It's nice and straightforward. But I'm also storing the user's IP address. And this is just going to be structured as a plain text field. And later on within our tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can store information about the user's city and country, which of course we will also extract from their IP address. So if I just jump back into our workflow tab, what I'd like to do is within this workflow, make changes to the current user's account and update their IP address. So I'm going to add a step in our workflow. I'm gonna to head to our data tab and I'm gonna to choose to make changes to a thing because the thing I'd like to change is going to be the current user. And in this case, I'd like to update their IP address field. And of course, in order to extract a user's IP address, I'm just gonna to have to pull the data from my IPFI plugin. So I'm going to, once again, select the get data from external API option. The API provider will be the get current user's IP address, and it truly is as simple as that. But one thing I'd like to point out is that at this point in time, this workflow is going to run every single time the page is loaded. So if the user is at home and they're wanting to open up the streaming service, it's going to update their IP address based off their main location. But then what happens if the user returns to our website that night and they're still at home, it's also going to update the IP address with the exact same value. Now, while that's not the end of the world, it kind of seems a little bit pointless that we're going to be continually updating this IP address even if it doesn't change. What I'd like to do is update the user's IP address only if they're in a separate location. And so what we can do is create a condition on our workflow trigger. So whenever the page is loaded and we can recognize that we only want to update the user's IP address if their current IP address is separate from the previous IP address saved under their account already. So I'm gonna create a condition here. And within this condition, I'm just gonna recognize if the user's current IP address. So once again, I'm gonna get data from an external API. The API provider will be the get current user's IP. IP address. So I want to recognize if their current IP address is not the same as the current user's saved IP address. So that is their last stored IP address. So if a user now changes location, this workflow will run and it will update that IP address successfully in our database. And of course, if the user doesn't change locations, it will just remain the same. And now just like that, that's how easy it is to store someone's IP address directly in your database. What I just wanna quickly do is jump back into my Notion checklist and just tick off that we've finished not only installing the IPFI plugin, but we've learned how we could also fetch and display a user's IP address on a page. And of course, just then I'd explained how we can store a user's IP address in our database. But right now it kind of seems a little bit pointless to just store a user's IP address, which is a string of numbers saved as text because there's not really much you can actually do with that. Whereas what I'm interested in doing with my billion dollar streaming service is creating exclusions for what countries actually have access to my content. And now this is where we can get into the next stage of our tutorial. And within this, I'm gonna explain how you can extract more information from a user's IP address. So things like their city or their country. And then I'm gonna show you how we can create exclusions on my content within the streaming service to only allow people in certain regions to stream certain content. So if we jump back into Bubble here, what I'd love to do is head over to my plugins tab because we're gonna to need to install yet another plugin in order to bring this feature to life. And that plugin is known as the IPGeo plugin. Now this is another free plugin. So you'll just need to open up your plugin library, search for the IPGeo plugin, install that, and then the first thing I wanna do is similar to before, just show you how we can actually display the data from this plugin on a page. So if I jump into my design tab, I'm just gonna head back over to the original page we built out. This is of course the page where we were displaying the user's IP address. And what I'd like to do is just make a copy of this text element on my page. I'm then going to right click in this field and choose to clear this expression, which is just going to remove all of that dynamic data. And for this example, what I'd love to do is just extract the country and city from my personal IP address. And in order to do that, I'm once again going to need to get data from an external API. 
Only in this case, the API provider will be our IP info API. So that's the IP geo plugin we've just installed. And what you'll see here is that we're required to add in our own IP address from which this plugin is going to extract the information from. Now at this point in time, it's just added in a static IP address. Whereas what you'll need to do is replace this with the current user's actual IP address. And so the way we can do that is of course, by linking this to our IPFI plugin, which is able to pull the user's IP address. So we're going to remove this text here and we're going to insert dynamic data. And what we're gonna do is select to get data from another external API and our API provider will be our IPFI plugin. So we're going to once again, like before, get current users API address address. I can then close this. And now you'll see that it's adding that as a dynamic value. And from this IP address, I can now select what I would like to extract from this. So I can select the user city, their region, their country, and so on. So in this case, I'm just going to display my country. And then let's say if I want to display my city, I'm just going to make a quick copy of this text element. I will then update the value I'm displaying to not be the country, but instead be the city. Now, if I was to go and run a quick preview of this page, what you'll see is that over in the top left hand corner of my page, we're not only displaying my IP address, but we're also displaying my country code as well as the city that I live in. So as you can see, displaying this information is just as straightforward as it was to display someone's IP address. But similar to before, how can we take this one step further and actually store this information in our database? I'm glad you asked because it couldn't get any simpler. Let's jump back into Bubble here and let's open up the home page of my awesome streaming service. And from this page, we're going to jump back into our workflow editor and I'm going to open up the workflow that was triggered every single time the page was loaded. And I'm going to open up the step number one, which is where we were making changes to the user's account. And so if you remember, we're currently storing the user's IP address in our database. But what I'd like to do is update the additional data fields I'd mentioned. So in my database under our user data type, we had two data fields known as our city and country, and these were both stored as just text fields. So what I'm going to do is just jump back into my workflow editor and I'm going to choose to change these fields. So I'll start by selecting the city. So for this user's city, I'm going to need to once again, extract the data from my IPGO plugin. So I'm going to select to get data from an external API. The API provider will first be my IPGO plugin. And of course, I'm going to need to use the value of the current user's IP address. So I'm just going to backspace this static value here. I will insert dynamic data and once again, get data from another external API. And this time it's going to be the data from my IPFI plugin. So the get current users IP address option, I can close that. And in this case, I just like to store the value of the city. Then from here, I'm going to want to store the value of the country. So I'm going to select that the user's country data field should equal, I'll once again, get data from an external API. The API provider will first of all be my IP geo plugin. Then I'll need to update the IP address. I will once again, remove the static value insert dynamic data, and of course, select to get additional data from an external API. I will then select the IPFI plugin. I can close that. And now the very last thing I'll need to do is just select that I want to store the user's country. And just like that, it is that simple to store a user's city and country data in our database. So what we're gonna do from here is just jump back into my Notion checklist and I'm going to tick off that we've finished learning how we can format the IP address as an actual location, which in my opinion gives us usable data that we can implement into our app. So I'm just gonna check all of these items off. And the very last thing I wanted to explain, and in my opinion, this is one of the cooler features we're gonna to create today, is how I can actually exclude access to certain features in my app based on a user's IP address. And so what we're gonna do is jump back into my bubble editor. We're gonna open up my design tab here. Now on my streaming service, I'm just gonna quickly give you a rundown of how I built this so that way everything makes sense to you as I walk through this feature. So on my homepage, I essentially just have a hero section here, which is a group with an image in it, as well as some text and a button. That's not really relevant though. Below this though, I have a repeating group, which is pulling from a list of videos in my database. So I'm just performing a search for all my videos. 
it's super straightforward. I haven't tried to overcomplicate things. Then inside of this repeating group, I just have a thumbnail image as well as a text element, which just displays the video's title as well as how many seasons it has. But when someone clicks on the thumbnail image, what I've done is I've also built out a pop-up on this page. And this pop-up just displays a preview of this particular video. So within this pop-up, what I've done is I've given this a type of content to be a video because when I click on a thumbnail image, I'm going to want to send some data through to this pop-up, which is going to be a video. And once I've sent through the value of a specific video, I will display once again, its thumbnail image as well as its title and then the play button. Now I've already built out a workflow just quickly that I'm going to show you. So whenever the thumbnail image is clicked, I'm just displaying data into my pop-up. So I'm sending through the data of the video that's selected from my repeating group. And then I'm just showing it in my pop-up. It's nothing too advanced. But in my design tab for my pop-up here, I also have a play button. Now this button doesn't really do anything right now for the sake of our tutorial. But let's say I wanted to restrict access to this button based on a user's country from their IP address. What I could do is create a condition on this button that just recognizes if the user's IP address falls outside of a particular region. So I'm gonna create a condition here. I'll define a condition and I'm just gonna recognize if the current user, if their country is not. And now this is where I can add in the country code for the IP address that I would like to only make my content available in. So if you remember before, when I took a preview of my page where I had displayed the country code as well as my city for my IP address, the country was displayed as AU and that's because I'm based in Australia. But let's say for the sake of this tutorial, I only want this content to be available to those users in the United States. The country code for that is US. And so I'm just gonna type in that as a free text option. And if you weren't sure what a country code is, by all means, just open up a Google search and just Google search what a country code is for a region based on its IP address. Now, if you really wanted, you could also restrict this by cities, but in my example today, I'm only going to restrict this by countries. So right now, if the current user's country is not in the United States, which is the US country code, what I'd like to do is update the text that's displayed in this button. And I'm just gonna have this display something like this content is not available in your region. And what I love about conditions in Bubble is that you can toggle these on and off to see what that's gonna look like whenever this condition is true. So what I can see here is that because we have quite a bit of text in this, the height of our button is going to expand. So what I'd like to do is also update the width of this button whenever this condition has become true. So I'm gonna change another property here and I'm gonna change the width. And instead of the width being 150 pixels, I'm gonna set this to be 400 pixels, which you'll now see is long enough to fit in all of my content. And that is everything I'd like to change. What I'd love to do is just quickly run a preview of this to show you what this is going to look like based in my account, which is not located in the United States. So I'm going to run a preview of my app here. Then I'm going to scroll on down to my content. I'm going to click on one of my TV series. And there's no surprises here that because I'm not based in the United States, this content is not available in my region. But what I'd love to show you is that because I'm based in Australia, if I was to update that condition to make it accessible to myself, we will then see that this content will in fact be available to me. So I'm gonna jump back into Bubble. Instead of having this content only be available in the US, I'm gonna have this be available in Australia. So the country code is now AU. I can then jump back into my preview, refresh my page, scroll back on down to the same TV series, open this up, and what you'll now see is that this content is available for me to stream. And just like that, that wraps up everything I wanted to cover within this particular tutorial today. I'm just gonna jump back into my Notion checklist and tick off the very last items on my list, which was of course how we could exclude certain features of our app for specific users in specific regions. And just like that, you can see how easy it is to start working with IP addresses inside of Bubble. Of course, if you wanted to see any additional Bubble tutorials I share, be sure to hit that subscribe button on my channel, so that way you can be the first to know when I drop a new video. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial, and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.